So I was asked to speak today specifically on courage and youth. The title of my talk this evening is Why Fear is Necessary for Courage. For many years, in times of adversity and great challenge, I have heard the words, you must have courage, as if courage was something that could be possessed. The danger of this approach is that we look into each other's eyes in this room and say, he has the courage, she has the courage, I don't have as much courage as them. Or even worse, we say, I have courage and they do not. But courage is not a possession endowed upon a special person or found in parts across the world or in a particular time in history. Courage is a practice. It's a practice that you don't have to do every day because you can, but it's something that you choose to do when you must. I was also told a lie growing up, to not be afraid, instead have courage. But courage and fear are not opposites. They walk hand in hand like hunger. A truthful recognition of hunger inside makes self-satisfaction possible. The question we really have to ask ourselves is, what is it that we really fear? If we are afraid that we will fail, or worse, that we will always fail and pass money to get something done, the lowest of our fears wins. If we are afraid that standing in line is an effort in futility and following the example of those who skip and get to the top is our only hope, then we give in to the inferior fear. The thing is, I am also afraid. I'm afraid that when I pass money, I tell people it is okay not to do well, and maybe they were always doomed to fail. I also tell the person who I pass money to that they have the right price for something that money can't buy, fairness. I'm afraid that when I skip the line, I put people behind me further, those who waited before me further back. I'm also afraid that nothing can be due process, that opportunity is not equal, that a chance was not given for all because I was anxious about waiting. So yes, I am afraid. Are our fears rooted in individual feelings of pressure and anxiety, or does it belong to a wider set of concerns, to a wider community of people, to a wider and always expanding imagination? Courage belongs to a wider fear. A greater fear that others are not the best version of themselves. In the interest of the whole, doing the wrong and corrupt thing cannot be tolerated nor continue. When public officials squander our money or appropriate public goods and resources for private gain, while they must one day face the force of justice and law, hopefully, our great loss as a people is not cash in the economy. To the contrary, the thing hardest to replenish for which it will take many more years to restore its wasted confidence and trust in our system. So for anti-corruption day, we must think about courage and the fear we have that will push us to get up and do something. Routine injustice and continual corruption easily put us in positions of retreat or resignation. And corruption is a crime that most are unaware that they are the victims. In our not too distant past, Jean Miles exercised courage, and she paid the price for us all in 1966. Maybe we were too afraid to do more to keep her body and her spirit alive with us. For 2016, students in South Africa are mobilizing against government corruption. They make the link between disappearing public money and the unstable argument of the state, which looks at youth in their eyes and say, we cannot afford your tertiary education. Today, Tomorrow, and maybe into next week, a number of young people are taken to the streets, converting what they see on social media into action, to cry, to complain, to strategize around the issue of violence against women following the news of Shannon Banfield. While this has much less to do with corruption, it has a lot to do with young men, especially young women, who know that today or tomorrow's taxis and street corners are not any safer than they were yesterday but they still make their way to publicly speak up and speak out. Courage belongs to those whose fear gives them a view of the wider picture. Courage sees a small act as part of a broader network of actors. We know silence is not a strategy for change. Ignorance is comfort for a fool or luxury few people can afford, and hopelessness an unnecessary full stop to punctuate our story. 
Courage as a practice was always a difficult thing, but made sense each time when I told myself, I am afraid, but I am doing something. I am being brave. Thank you.